Ever wonder what might keep Einstein up at night? <laughs> well, it might be something called quantum entanglement. Uh, this is from sciencealert.com. Uh, physicists just reinforce the reality of quantum weirdness in the universe. Now, this is talking about something called quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement is this really strange reality that when you have two linked particles, they seem to communicate, um, no matter how far apart they are, they seem to communicate instantly with one another. And this is what Einstein called spooky action at a distance. It's one of the strangest phenomena that you're likely to come across in all of science. It's this idea of quantum entanglement, where two particles interact in such a way that they become deeply linked and essentially share an existence even if they're light years apart. Einstein famously couldn't get on board with this idea and ultimately decided that it was just too weird to be true. But a new experiment has made, has just made the strongest case yet for the reality of quantum entanglement. So it looks like our universe is just as bizarre as we expected. The real estate left over for the skeptics of quantum mechanics has shrunk considerably. One of the team, David Kaiser at MIT, told Jennifer Chu at physics.org. Uh, we haven't gotten rid of it, but we've shrunk it down by 16 orders of magnitude. As a concept, quantum entanglement is one of the most difficult things to prove because while physicists can easily observe it, entangled particles are the very basis of quantum computing. It's impossible to know for sure that hidden variables aren't messing with the results to make it only look like two particles are an inexorably linked. If you're not familiar with quantum entanglement, imagine two particles. They can be separated by a few meters or a couple of light years, but regardless of how far apart they're entangled. Uh, that means that for some inexplicable reason, these distant particles are able to maintain a special connection with each other so that if one particle is measured, physicists will know the exact measurements of its partner. It's pretty weird stuff. And that's weird on its own. Uh, it's weird enough on its own, but what makes this phenomenon even stranger is the fact that neither of these particles have built-in properties. Their properties are only defined once they're measured. So how can the partner particle have definable properties when we haven't even nailed them down yet? Despite the fact that countless experiments over the past century have confirmed quantum entanglement behavior, no one can fully explain it. And Einstein himself remained a skeptic until the very end, dismissing it as a spooky action from a distance. Einstein didn't deny that particles appeared to be quantum entangled, but argued that some hidden variables were at play that made this so. This prompted physicist John Bell to establish a kind of test in the 1960s that could measure the probability that the appearance of entanglement was either down to actual entanglement or some other variable that made it look like entanglement. Bell test experiments, also known as Bell's inequality experiments, involve per performing independent measurements on each entangled particle to see which option bears out most convincingly. Bell showed that statistically, correlations between the results once above a certain threshold limit could not be explained by particles having hidden properties, according to Elizabeth Gibney, reports for nature. Instead, the coordinated outcomes seem to be the result of measurements on one particle mysteriously fixing the properties of the other. But scientists soon realized that there was no limit, even to Bell's own limit, certain loopholes that left out the possibility of non-quantum explanations. One of these loopholes was that perhaps the particles we're sharing information at the speed of light, and our instruments were too slow to pick up on this, or perhaps the fact that experiments involving quantum entanglement, entangled particles, end up losing a bunch of them skewed the final results. These two loopholes were finally addressed in 2015, when a historic experiment saw quantum entanglement pass its toughest test yet by discounting both possibilities as being more likely than quantum spookiness. But one loophole remains, the freedom of choice loophole. As Gibney explains, every time we use the Bell test, we assume that the scientists running the experiments have free choice over which measurements they perform 
on each of the pair of entangled photons, or light particles. But some unknown effect could be influencing both the particles and what tests are performed, either by affecting choice of measurement directly, or more plausibly, by restricting the options that are available to produce correlations that give the illusion of entanglement. In other words, imagine the universe as a restaurant with 10 menu items. You think you can order any of the 10, but then they tell you we're out of chicken, and it turns out only five of the things are really on the menu, one of the team, Andrew Friedman at MIT, told Quantum Magazine. You still have the freedom to choose from the remaining five, but you are overcounting your degrees of freedom. So when it comes to quantum entanglement experiments, there might be unknowns, constraints, boundary conditions, conservation laws that could end up limiting your choices in a very subtle way, says Friedman. And these factors might fool us into thinking quantum entanglement is a thing. One of the most obvious culprits in this scenario is gravity. Perhaps its influence is limiting the number of possible measurements that we can make on entangled particles in Earth-based experiments. So how do we get around the freedom of choice loophole when the universe itself seems to be against us? We outsource a choice to the universe itself, Friedman told Nature. In the past, researchers have tried to overcome the loophole by using a random number generator to randomly select which properties to measure, which means that researchers aren't involved, uh, aren't introducing bias to the experiment by selecting the properties themselves. They fire a pair of quantum particles in opposite directions toward two different detectors and this random number generator picks the properties to measure at the very last moment before the particles arrive at their detectors. This means the particles barely have any time to share information with each other and only appear to be entangled as Einstein suspected. The experiment was solid, but it only ruled out the influence of hidden variables several microseconds before the particles were fired. What if things had been predetermined before that? A team involving researchers from MIT the University of Vienna in Austria, and institutions in China and Germany decided to use starlight as a way of pushing back the time, length of time when hidden influences could be discounted. The experiment involved allocating the color red or blue to certain properties that could be measured in entangled particles. Two telescopes were then set up to detect incoming starlight as either blue or red, and whichever color was detected determined the properties that were to be measured in the entangled particles. And here's a trick. Because the color of starlight cannot be changed along the way, it means if any hidden non-quantum variables were messing with the particles and predetermining the properties, it would have to be done before the starlight was emitted. And seeing as the closest star to Earth, not including our sun, investigated in this uh, sample is 575 light years away, it means this predetermination would have to be have been set in motion uh, at least around 600 years ago. If any physical mechanism were to somehow jigger with the questions that get asked of each particle, those would have to have been put in motion at that star when it was about to emit that light we measured, Kaiser told uh, Leia Crane at New Scientist. The experiment doesn't close the freedom of choice loophole altogether, but for the first time confirms that quantum spookiness has existed for at least the past 600 years. And now researchers have to figure out how to push this limit back even further. Friedman thinks they can do this by applying the same technique to entangled particles using light from distant quasars. This should push back uh, the limits back billions of years, he says. Okay, maybe not billions, but uh, take it as it will. Uh, but what's the end game? The beginning of the universe? The Big Bang? That's not exactly uh, something physicists are keen on confirming either, so as Natalie uh, Wolchover explains for Quanta. It should be that the universe restricted freedom of choice from the very beginning, that every measurement was predetermined by correlations established at the Big Bang. Superdeterminism, as this is called, is unknowable, uh, said Jan a. Uh, Eich Larsen, a physicist at Linköping University in Sweden. The Cosmic Bell test crew will never be able to rule out correlations that existed before there were stars, quasars, or any other light in the sky. That means the freedom of choice loophole can never be completely shut. For Friedman, though, the possibilities are too intriguing not to chase. For us, it seems like kind of a win-win, he told Wolchover. Either we close the loophole more and more, and we're more confident in quantum theory, or we see something that could point toward new physics. 
the study has been published by Physical Review Letters. Now, what I find very interesting about this is that God is the one who created free will. Remember that tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Well, what is evil? Evil, according to the Bible, is the ability to choose something other than what God would actually choose. Now, how do I know that? Well, I go to places like Isaiah 45, 7. There we read that God says that I form the light and create darkness. Let's stop right there for a second. How did God form light and create darkness? I mean, what does it mean he created darkness? Isn't darkness simply the absence of light? Well, you know, way back when, before God created anything, there was only light because God is light. So that was the state of, you know, everything, so to speak, right? There's just God, all right? So it gets a little bit complicated in that sense. But there was only God, and there was only light. And then God did something new. He created darkness. Whoa, pretty interesting concept. All right. And then he says, I make peace and I create calamity. That's according to the New King James. If you actually look at the Hebrew, the Hebrew says ra. The word ra, it means evil. And it's the same word that we have for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil evil ra all right so god is the one who actually created that now what does it mean does that mean that he makes us do all kinds of bad things or does it mean that he created the possibility for us to do evil things well i would take the latter so when we see in isaiah 66 verse 4 god says so i will choose i will choose their delusions and bring their fears on them because when i called no one answered when I spoke, they did not hear. This is the important part. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. So you see, evil is choosing to do what God does not delight in. It's choosing to do something that God doesn't like. God created the possibility for there to be no light. He also created the possibility for there to be choices other than what he likes. Because by definition, everything that God likes is good. But in order for us to have free will, he has to give us the possibility, the opportunity to choose something other than what he wants. And so this idea of quantum entanglement, while it doesn't specifically prove uh, free will, it doesn't specifically prove the Bible, I do believe that it underscores and it complements that idea very much. That you have two particles that become entangled, and that when you measure one, there's an instant reaction over here. I mean, that has some incredibly profound implications that we will continue to look at uh, as we study more and more about quantum entanglement. Well, I hope this has been a good introduction for you. Until next time, God bless you.